Today, we are going to be spending a day in the life of a rider here at the Track Champions League. We're going to get to see all the behind the scenes, as well as get to know what it's like to be a professional track cyclist. Psst. Morning. You ready to spend the day in the life? Not yet, Manon. Okay, I'll, I'll let you have a coffee and breakfast and I'll come back in a bit. You have a lay in, just relax. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Track Champions League, it's a series of track events where we see the world's very best riders come together to battle it out. The first round is here in the cycling hotspot of Mallorca. Then the following rounds will be Paris, Berlin and London. We'll be showing all the action live over on GCN Plus, so make sure you tune in. But the rider who has been kind enough to let me follow around today is Irish track cyclist Emily Kay. I'll be honest, I didn't really give her much choice. I was going to follow her around if she liked it or not. We also happen to be ex-teammates and she is one of my closest friends. Thanks for letting me uh, spend the day with you today. It's okay. I mean, not that I gave you much choice because I pretty much forced you into it. No. But um, what, does, what does today look like? What are we going to get up to? Yeah, I think Champions League is pretty relaxed to what we're used to. It's racing starts from seven, so I've got the whole day just to chill out. So probably won't do much this morning and then head for some lunch on you. <laughs> and then um, Cheeky. down to the track, set my bike up, get some pre-race food for ready for my warm-up race and then get ready to go at seven. Mm, sounds quite chilled, really. Yeah, yeah I, nice. think, I think I can manage this. It's been a while since I've packed a race bag. Um, what's the most important thing that goes into the bag first? Um, probably definitely my skin suit. Yeah, I probably couldn't really do much with that <laughs> no. now. So I've got my custom Santini Champions League skin suit, that is which... very fancy. Yep, is in the Irish colours. Mm -hmm. In it goes. Yep, and then secondly is probably my number. Champions League is also pretty big on tech, so they track everything we do. So I've been given a special heart rate monitor so they can see how much I'm dying in the race. These are my specific carbon track shoes. I was going to say, why are your shoes in bubble wrap? But they are pretty fancy shoes. Custom made, so only I can fit in these. So yeah, they're I can't, pretty. I can't steal your shoes. No, pretty cool. Fair enough. And then, yeah, my socks, overshoes, mitts. Probably lasting my headphones ready for warming up to get, get some zone. good tunes on. Mm. Do you want me to carry your bag for you? No, I'm good. You sure? Yep. I mean, I'm here to help. No. You're racing, you need to be like on tip top condition. I am. You need to be rested. Do you want a piggyback? No, thank you. Okay. Um, here you go, madam. Do you want me to take your bag for you? No, no, not normally okay. this nice to me. <laughs> well, I have to be because it's on camera. This looks nice. This is my favourite cafe. Is it? In Mallorca. I have to say, this looks delicious. This is a good shout. Yeah. Good cafe mm -hmm. choice. But You've lived in Mallorca kind of like part-time for quite a while now with the Irish track cycling team. Yep. What is it like living in Mallorca? Yeah, I love living in Mallorca. It's great for bike riding, there's flat roads and obviously stunning mountains. And yeah, it's a really nice place to live. The weather's good. Uh, on my rest days, I come to Parma and the food and the restaurants and the Just cafes. Just like do cafe are, tours. Yeah, yeah. so good. So. And obviously you've got the velodrome and that's where the Irish team train. Yep, that's where we do all of our track training, our track camps. So it's really cool that, you know, where I train is now where I get to race Champions League. Yeah, that's pretty cool. I mean, no, no cafe stop is complete without a bit of banana bread, carrot cake and some coffee. But I thought this would be a great opportunity to send you some questions. Yep. But for as long as I have known you, you have always ridden a bike. What is your earliest memory of being on a bike? Um, I started racing at five. And so like straight out of the womb yep, on a bike. On a bike. <laughs> was obsessed with pink, had a pink bike, pink kit, pink Reeboks. And yeah, I just loved it really. And I've literally ridden a bike pretty much every day since. And when you did that first race, did you know 
even though you were like so young, we were like, this is what I want to do. Yeah, hundred percent. I was five. I was like, I want to go to the Olympic Games. I competed for Ireland in Tokyo, and I think yeah, having a dream at five of wanting to go to the Olympics and and like working for 20, 20 one years to go and then yeah when I got that phone call to say I was going to the Olympics it was just worth every minute I guess. Okay so we will finish off this lovely coffee and cake and then I guess it's time to head to the track. Sounds and good. And it gets a bit serious. Yeah. She gets in race mode. So lazy doesn't even use a pump. There's an automatic one to do it for her. Do you know what gear you're going to want to race on? I think for the points race 106 and then to 110 for the scratch race. Really? Wow. Yeah, we'll see. Well, she, she said she knew what gear she wanted on and now, she, now she's here at the mechanics and she's um, having second thoughts and having a look at the gear chart. Because once you've got that gear on, there's no change and you can't just you know, shift down the gear on the track, you have to stick to it. So it is a big decision to make. Yeah. Maybe I should just so get involved and tell her what to do. I guess we'll leave you get changed. We probably don't need to. No, probably don't. Don't, need to, don't need to see that. But Bye. see you in a minute. Bye. So we've arrived at the track. Emily set her bike up and she's got changed. She's going to jump on the track to do a little bit of a warm up before long but she actually has a points race before the real racing starts um, at four o'clock and then seven o'clock so that's when the action happens and this stadium is going to be packed and I came here to the round in Mallorca last year and the atmosphere was electric in here so I'm really excited even just to be a spectator here and to watch Emily race it's going to be super exciting. So you go on the track and then you come back down and go on the rollers. Um, why do you do two warm-ups? Yeah, I just go on the track to feel feel the boards, um, just open my legs up, get them to feel um, some resistance, and then yeah, then I'll come down and do the rollers, and that's just really like to open my heart and lungs up and get a bit of a sweat on ready to race really. Still warm up. So, what have you got now? Um, so now, because it's the first round, we're all doing a group photo of all the athletes together on the track. Um, and then, yeah, just get myself ready to start at seven. So it's just before the racing starts, I'm going to let Emily do her last bit of preparations. But I've come outside for a little bit of a breather because it is scorching hot in that velodrome. So I needed a bit of cool air. But I thought now would be a great time to talk you through the races that Emily's going to be doing. So first up, she's got a scratch race, and that's probably the most simple race in track cycling. It's 20 laps of the track. The first rider to cross the line wins. And then after that, she's got an elimination race, which is my least favourite to race on the track, but my favourite to watch. It is the last rider to cross the line gets eliminated every other lap. And basically it's just like a whittling down process. And then there's two riders left. And then the first one across the line wins. So that is a really fun one to watch. But now I think we better go back up and catch up with Emily and see what she's up to. Okay, Emily. We're about an hour away from when your first race starts. When do you start getting nervous? I feel like I've obviously known you a long time, but I've never really known you to like show your nerves that much. Or do you just like, are you really good at keeping them in? Uh, I'd probably say that I probably don't get as nervous for this as I would for like a world championship. This is a bit more relaxed, but 
yeah, probably just after I finish my warm up when I'm sat there getting ready to go up on the track, it's probably when I start to feel a bit a bit of nerves really. And what does it feel being up on the boards in the middle of that bunch with all these riders around you on a fixed gear bike, the crowds and everything? It must be quite an experience. Yeah, definitely. I think being in this environment with the crowd, with the music, the lights, you know, there's there's not really another race like it. Cool. Well, I'll let you go. Get ready, do your warm up and uh, we'll see you on the other side. Good luck. Thank you. Okay, so Emily has just jumped on the rollers and she's going to start her warm up for her first race, which is the 20 lap scratch race. So. I'm gonna let her get in the zone, get serious, get a race head on. And um, I think I might try and do some commentary while she's racing. But if you do want to catch all the action, you're gonna have to tune in to GCM Plus to watch it. But you can listen to my commentary in this if you want. So now it's time for Emily's race. I really wanted to do well, but they've all just lined up here now, ready to go on the track. And then they're gonna get up on the fence. 20 laps of the track, first one to cross the line wins. And I don't know why, I feel a little bit nervous for her. I really wanted to do well. But it's weird getting uh, pre-race nerves when I'm not even the one racing. Emily, how do you feel? Scared. No, you're not, you're gonna smash it. What, what's your, are you gonna go with like two and a half laps to go? I can't tell you, that's a secret. Okay, secret, that's fair enough. Well, um, I'll be cheering on from down here. See you on the flip side. Katie Archibald has just attacked and she's probably one of the favourites for the race and you can see everybody was on her wheel straight away but it's all kind of bunching up back together now so Emily's still in there in a good position. How many laps to go? 12 laps to go now, nearly halfway but yeah if someone needs to wants to attack and get a lap they kind of need to do it early because it's such a short race but it's going to be an exciting one. I have a feeling it's going to come down to a bunch sprint because if anybody's going to get away it will be Katie Archibald. Oh, she's on the front. Save your energy, Kay, get off the front. Don't get on the front until the last lap. The only thing with a velodrome and being in the center, your head is like spinning around because you have to keep on turning around to watch them. Five laps to go. My heart rate's going so fast, I don't know why. So exciting. Where is she? There she is. Go on, Emily. Oh, this is tense. Come on, Emily. Three laps to go. Three laps, come on. Move to the front, come on, Emily. Get on a good wheel. Here we go, move up, move up. Two laps to go. Don't get trapped underneath. Come on! Come on, Emily! Oh, Katie Archibald's on the front. Come on, Emily! Come on! Woo! Oh, I think she's in the top 10 there. Oh my God, why is my heart rate going so fast? That was good, a win for Katie Archibald. Well done, hun. How was that? Yeah, uh, uh, tough, but I am happy with that. It's good. What was your uh, tactic? Um, I just think in, in a race that short, you've got to kind of, especially in the last ten, last ten laps, like always be moving forward, always be at the front of the bike race. So I just tried to keep myself going forward all the time. So and it must be so hard because literally everybody wants to be at the front. So it's literally like one big fight to be at the front in that last like two laps yeah and definitely with the race being 20 laps like no one's really fatigued you know uh, yeah it's really tough it's just 
trying to hold your position and keep moving forward, really. So you do a quick cool down, bit of a rest, then back on warm up. Yeah, I'll cool down now, just get that out of my legs, have a good drink, and then, yeah, warm up again to be ready to go in the elimination. Well, I can't wait. Good luck. Okay, so now I'm going to head upstairs to the stands and watch from there because, well, one, my neck is a bit sore from being in the middle and watching all the racing going around in circles. I was getting a bit dizzy. So we're going to get a good view up there. And next up is the elimination race, which is one of my favourite races to watch, a really tactical race. So it's going to be the best place to watch and uh, cheer on Emily. So let's go. you love about velodromes is every time you stand somewhere different around the track you get a different point of view of what it looks like and it looks completely different and you get to see the riders race from a different point of view so now I'm in the kind of in the banking but I can see the straight as well which is a completely different view to what I had when I was down in the middle so yeah another reason why I love velodromes I mean there's a very long list of why I love velodromes but that's one of them And off they go. Now this race, they will be going so fast because basically everybody wants to be in the front of this race because if you're at the back, you're going to be eliminated and it's really hard not to get boxed in because if you're at the bottom of the track and you've got riders all around you, you just can't get out. So positioning is really crucial in this race. She's going around the top now. So she's like coming to the front. So she's on the blue line at the front. There she is at the front. Great positioning from Emily there, right at the front. Go on, girl. This can also be a really frustrating race because you could have really good legs, but you can get trapped in and then that's your race over and you're eliminated. So yeah, sometimes your race can only last two laps if you're eliminated first, which isn't, isn't great. You can also go from the front to the back of this race in like a matter of seconds. So Emily was just at the front there, then she went all the way to the back and she had to go all the way around to get back to the front. But she's doing well so far, she's out of trouble, holding a good position. But the problem is you, you can't sit on the front of the race for too long because you'd use up all your energy. So you have to be very smart and tactical in this race and good at getting out of boxes. You need to use your elbows. Think she might have been eliminated. Yeah. She got box boxed in right at the bottom. So that was Emily's last race, the elimination race. So let's head back down to the riders pits and catch up with her. Hi Emily. How was that elimination? Um, yeah, it was good. Chose the wrong gear, but you know, all learning. <laughs> <laughs> How much of a difference did that make? Yeah, I think just in an, an elimination when it's like repeated, repeated sprints, it can be quite damaging on the legs. So yeah, I, I just went too big and then paid the price. <laughs> and it looked like you kind of got boxed in a little bit at the end, like you were at the bottom and you had nowhere to go. and. And I guess that's the thing with an elimination race. You can be like literally at the front one minute, next minute, you're at the back. Yeah, everyone's so quick that it's just, yeah, it just keeps moving forward. It's just like a washing machine. You just get chucked back and have to get forward again. But yeah, that's elimination. That's how it goes. I shouldn't have been there, so. <laughs> Don't be too hard on yourself, come on. <laughs> but you finish racing now, straight down here, packing your bike up. Yep, I've got a flight in about eight hours, so I've got to pack my bike, get back to the hotel, and then get on a flight home tomorrow morning. You're going to do like an all-nighter and go out in, out in Mallorca? It's a no from me. 
<laughs> not got any minerals left. Wow. How do you, how do you sum up your day? Um, okay. In terms of like spending it with me, it's been okay, just okay. Best day of my life. <laughs> That was the answer I wanted, but thank you so much for letting me annoy you for the whole entire day. It's actually been really fun to be back in back in track racing, but kind of the different side, the maybe less stressful side, and I can w just watch Emily stress. You can come back if you want. Oh, she likes us. She wants us back, but thanks, Emily, and um, have fun packing your bike. Um, is, oh, is there anything I can do to help? Are you sure? I don't mind. I feel like I haven't really been that much of a help today. I've done it all now. So. Okay, whoopsie, I was a bit late. So there we have it, a day in the life of a rider at the Track Champions League. I just want to say a big thank you to Emily for letting me follow her around today because I'm sure it's quite annoying having me follow her around all day. But let me know down in that comment section below if you did enjoy this video and make sure to tune in to that Track Champions League racing on GCN Plus. Honestly, it is so good and I feel like I need to convert all you GCN viewers to be lovers of track cycling because it is my favourite. But thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.